Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here doing some integrals that look like the integral of du over a squared plus u squared, which involves the inverse tangent definition here. We've got three examples we're going to work in this video. You can skip to one of these if you'd like, or you can just work through all three with us and get some more practice. Looking at our first one here, the integral of dx over 9 plus 4x squared. So looking at this here, in our formula, remember that a is just some constant expression and u is some expression that involves our variable of integration. So when I look over here, I should be able to see the 9 is the a squared part, and the 4x squared contains variables, so that is the u squared part. So I know that this is going to be a squared plus u squared on the bottom. Notice up here I also need a du, right, to make this exactly into the definition we have here, so I'll need to figure that out. Let's go ahead and write down what we have, though. If a squared is 9, that tells us that a is 3. And if u squared is 4x squared, just be careful here, that means u is 2x, because 2x times itself gives us 4x squared, right, so that would be u squared. So now we need du. Well, based on u equals 2x, what is du? Well, the derivative of this would be 2, right? So du is 2 dx. And we don't have exactly 2 dx on the top here, right? We actually just have dx. So how could I turn this statement into exactly something for dx? I could divide both sides by 2. That would say then that 1 half du is equal to dx. And now I know exactly what dx is going to be, right? dx is going to be 1 half du. Now, this 1 half is just a constant multiple. I can go ahead and move that out front, right, when I set up my integral. Let's do that. So we'll go ahead and say 1 half integral of du over a squared plus u squared. Okay, so we've set up exactly the formula that we have. We just have a multiple of 1 half in the front. That's no problem. So keep your 1 half. And now what does the formula say? It says we should get 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a plus our constant, right? Now all we need to do is go back in and plug in our a and our u, and we have everything back in terms of x, right? So a is 3, so that will go in for both my a's, and then u is 2x, that will go in there. So we'll actually get 1 half times 1 over a becomes 1 third inverse tangent of u over a is actually 2x over 3 plus c. Now notice we already had a one-half out front of our integral, right? And we got one-third from the 1 over a part of the formula. So really what we want to say here, I think, is 1 over 6 inverse tangent of 2x over 3, or 2 thirds x if you prefer, plus our constant. Okay, looking at our second one, we have the integral of x squared over 16 plus x to the 6 dx, knowing that our a squared is the constant part, so this is a squared, and knowing the variable part of this is the u squared, then my x to the 6 is u squared. Let's go ahead and write down information about a and u. So if a squared is 16, then a must be 4, and if u is x to the 6, what squared gives us x to the 6? x cubed times x cubed, right, would give us x to the 6. So our u is x cubed. We need a du. What is the derivative of this x cubed? du is 3x squared dx. Notice what we have here, though. We just have regular old x squared dx. So dividing by 3 on both sides, I would get 1 third du is actually the replacement for x squared dx. So this up here will be 1 third du. We'll go ahead and bump that 1 third out as constant multiple. Remember that's not part of our 1 over a, that's just constant multiple when we did our substitution. So that will be du over a squared plus u squared. Now we just write out what the definition tells us. I have 1 third out in the front. This becomes 1 over a inverse tan u over a, so 1 over a inverse tan u over a plus my constant. And now let's just go ahead and sub back our a and our u, right? So we would have 1 third times 1 over a would be 1 over 4 inverse tangent of u over a would become x cubed over 4 
plus our constant, and we should go ahead and clean that up, that one-third times one-fourth, so we'll say one-twelfth inverse tangent. You could put this in parentheses if you want. x cubed over four plus constant. Okay, let's look at our last one here, a little bit of a fun substitution with some exponentials. We have the integral of e to the x over 25 plus e to the 2x dx. Now, using this here, I know the constant part is going to be my a squared, and I know that e to the 2x must be my u squared somehow. And if you don't see it at first, this may help a little bit. Think about what is e to the x times e to the x. What do I do with these exponents? I add them, right? So e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x, right? e to the x times e to the x, though, is really e to the x squared, isn't it? So remember this other property of exponents. If you have an exponent and you have an exponent on that exponent, you can multiply those. So we really want to see this as a being 5, and we want to see u being e to the x. And this is really e to the x times itself down here. Okay, now if u is e to the x, we need to figure out du. The derivative of this is just e to the x, so du is e to the x dx. And that's nice, right, because we have exactly e to the x dx there, so that whole thing is just du. No constant multiple this time. Let's go ahead and set this up. So that becomes then the integral exactly of our definition, right? du over a squared plus u squared. We've got this set up. We'll use exactly our definition. That becomes 1 over a inverse tangent of u over a plus c. And now replacing our u and our a, that's going to give us 1 fifth inverse tangent of e to the x over 5 plus our constant. All right, everyone, those are our tangent examples. We also have other videos involving inverse sine definitions and inverse secant definitions, doing an example of those. Check those out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.